good participation uh, for for now. Um, I will first ask um, our uh, speaker to introduce uh, Mehdi Rashid to introduce herself and um, and then topic and start. Then we'll introduce the panelists later. So Mehreen, please go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you, Jay. So um, uh, I'm uh, Mary Narshad. I'm a um, assistant professor in pediatric infectious diseases at uh, Louis, Ch Louis Children's Hospital. Um, I uh, and the, uh, you know this is in Chicago. Um, we're part of the Northwestern University School of Medicine. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about COVID-19 and some special populations that um, you know perhaps don't get as much attention in this current um, pandemic, which obviously is affecting um, adults a whole lot more. Um, and so I wanted to uh, mostly talk about children, but then also talk, uh, I have a few, few slides on uh, pregnant women and um, immunocompromised patients, um, you know, just a, a couple of slides about them as well. Um, so this is the, the state of the world right now. We have more than 2 million cases all over the world. This is um, basically just showing the number of cases um, in, in different parts of the world. Um, more than 143,000 deaths right now. Um, the U.S. has the most number of cases in the world right now, um, and we are increasing at a you know, exponential rate um, still. Um, so if you look at COVID-19, most of the data, and again, this is data from China, but this has panned out, um, you know, if you look at data coming from Italy, Spain, most of Europe, as well as our, our own data from the U.S., most of the, most of the deaths um, occur in older, uh, in the older population with those that, have, that are more than 80 years old having the highest mortality rate. If you look at the um, younger age group, you know, those that are less than 18, um, there are very few, if any, deaths in that age no reported, uh, well, at this time, there were no reported cases in zero to nine years. Now, maybe we have one or two. Um, but, uh, but, but, but there is a you know, stark difference, as you can see, between children and between the elderly population. Um, so if you look at the clinical the characteristics of this disease in children. Um, this is a study that was initially published, uh, one of the first you know, case series out of um, uh, the Wuhan uh, Children's Hospital um, in China. Um, and this showed they basically followed um, 1,300 um, people uh, or 1,300 children of which 171 were positive. So their positivity rate was about 12.3%, uh, more likely to be hospitalized and then also require ICU care. Um, the older age groups, uh, most of these, you know, uh, were First, we have more numbers in this uh, in these age groups, but also um, these uh, patients do not tend to require hospitalization, and the vast majority of them um, are, you know, do pretty well at home. Um, of and you know, uh, fewer numbers of them requiring hosp hospitalization and ICU care. Um, so, like I said, we um, I work in a, in at Lurie Children's Hospital. We are a freestanding children's hospital. So uh, we are, you know, while we're part of the Northwestern University, we um, pretty much are our, our, our own entity within, um, you know, we have a separate building and, and on all of that stuff. So over the, la over the last, um, I would say four to five weeks, we have tested 383 um, children, um, of which 34 were positive for COVID. Again, that, that's you know, around 10%, so that's the same um, uh, uh, percentage wise as what had been seen in the children's hospital in China that I mentioned earlier. Um, and I, the other thing I, I would also notice, so, you know, it's 10% of all the children um, that were, had some of the classic symptoms of, um, of COVID. And so, you know, right now we are not testing everyone who has um, cough, fever, um, nasal congestion exam. Uh, for example, we are only testing children who, uh, who, uh, who either have um, you know, have a high risk, um, what we consider high risk, so patients who are, you know, either have asthma or immunocompromised for some reason, or, you know, are, um, um, or, or have patients, fam you know, family members that are positive, um, and, and, and or, the, or if they have a travel history. So this is, you know, the uh, population that is much more likely to have infection. And even in that population, only 10% of our kids actually tested positive for, for uh, COVID. Of the 34 um, kids who tested positive, 10 required admission. Um, 
and uh, four of them um, required ICU level care. Two of these kids were intubated, one um, has recovered and um, uh, just yesterday got discharged from the hospital. Um, Interestingly, um, you know, despite the fact that we only had 10, 10 children in the hospital, 44 of our healthcare workers also tested positive um, for COVID-19. Uh, COVID and um, actually, when we went back and looked, you know, our infection control team, when they went back and looked, none of the healthcare workers that were positive for COVID um, had come into contact or had known contact with the COVID-positive with the, with the COVID -positive patient. So, I'll, and I'll touch on this, why this is sort of interesting um, in a bit. Um, this is the graph that basically looks at the viral copies in um, in uh, in children, and so this is the um, you know the log uh, basically viral copies, um, and this is the log viral copies in healthcare workers, in uh, patients that were admitted, um, and then patients that that went. Home. Again, these are all children, right? So, or these two are children; these are adults. So, it you know, it's really interesting to know that children who um, went home, who came to the ED, and then were tested, but then deemed um, stable enough or you know uh, uh, healthy enough to go back home, actually had a higher viral load compared to those children that required uh, admission. And that viral load was similar to what was seen in the adult healthcare workers. None of our healthcare workers have required admission, um, and so. Um, you know, these are again not very sick healthcare workers. Um, but it was just interesting to note that the level of viral um, or the you know the, the burden of viral virus does not necessarily correlate correlate with um, the severity of disease um, in children. And then and you know I think there is some data out there um, showing the same for adults as well. All right. So coming to perinatal transmission. Um, there isn't a whole lot out there at all. Um, this is probably one of the largest um, the case series that that was um, that has been published. So this is an analysis that was done in China um, of 38 pregnant women. Um, it did not show none of these women had any um, cases of severe pneumonia or deaths. Uh, 22, but at the time that this case series was published, 22 of the 38 moms had gestational age between 30 and 40 weeks. Um, there were 30 infants that were delivered. Um, none of those infants had any. Um, a positive, uh, you know, none of them are positive for COVID-19. Uh, two separate neonates that, they, that this report um, uh, mentioned um, did test positive. One was diagnosed as 17 days of life um, and had close contact with confirmed cases of SARS-CoV-2, uh, where both the mother and the nanny was positive. Um, and then another uh, infant was positive at 36 hours. Both of these infants um, seem to do well. Um, this is a more recent, um, a review of a number of case reports and case series um, that was done. Um, it just actually came out um, last week. And this basically looks at a total. So they basically looked at all the case reports and a number of different case series that are out there. And um, they had a total of 108 patients um, that, they, that they looked at. Um, and so, you know, in terms of the uh, gestational age at which mothers, at which babies were born. Um, most of this is, uh, you know, as you can see, so 259 days is 37 weeks, which is, you know, normal, like a term pregnancy. So most of these infants were being born at term, at term or, you know, around term, except for this particular case series where their mean was 224 days, which is lower than the 259 days, which is considered term. Um, Interestingly, um, most of these deliveries by were by C-section, um, and then you know eight percent were was were by vaginal delivery. Again, this is most of this data is from China, and so it's a little hard to know whether you know people were just taking precautions or whether it was these these mothers were actually sick. That's why they required um, C-section. So that is a little hard to know. Um, if you look at the signs and symptoms that were being that uh, that these mothers showed, um, you know they're in sort of somewhat in line with, with what is shown in, uh, in adults. And one could almost argue that, you know, that, that uh, um, these symptoms also seem to be milder. So fewer number, you know, cough. most adults will have a cough, most adults will have a fever, um, and only 68% of pregnant women had a fever and 34% had cough. Um, so perhaps there, these, these mothers have um, less symptoms compared to other, other adults. Um, only 59% had lympho uh, lymphocytopenia, which is, you know, one of the very common um, signs associated with COVID-19. Um, 
70% had elevation of C-reactive protein, uh, marker of inflammation. And if you look at the outcomes in mothers, there was zero percent mortality that has been um, uh, that has been reported in these case stu case studies and case series, um, and three percent or three moms out of the 108 uh, required ICU admission. Um, there was only one neonatal mortality, um, one intrauterine uh, fetal uh, fetal death, and one case of vertical transmission. This vertical transmission was considered vertical transmission because there the baby had IgM that was positive. Um, but we, as we all know, IgMs are very hard to interpret. So again, we're not 100% sure that this was actually a uh, vertical transmission as well. Um, the, uh, just quickly going over what we are doing at Prentice. Prentice is our uh, maternity uh, um, um, maternal fetal um, hospital um, at our institute. Uh, what we're doing right now is we're basically looking at whether or not um, mothers, whether or not um, patients have a prior uh, COVID-19 positive test. If they had one earlier in their pregnancy and it's been about 40 days, then we basically treat them as normal, um, you know, give them routine care. Um, if it has been less than 40 days, but it has been seven days since the onset of symptoms um, and, you know, greater than seven, at least 72 hours since delivery um, and seven days since the last positive, then we basically follow um, these guidelines, which I'll come back to in a little, in a little bit. And uh, if it's been less than 72 hours since they've recovered or, you know, less than seven days till since they've uh, since onset of symptoms, then we put them in the high risk category. All mothers and um, healthcare workers in our um, L and D uh, um, on our L and D wards um, wear um, uh, masks. Um, at this time of delivery, uh, the OBs are actually wearing N95s right now. Um, but otherwise, do, while, when the mother is in labor, they're just wearing, taking doctor precautions. Um, when mothers are seven to 14 days since symptoms or since a positive test, the baby is allowed to come to, to stay in the mom's room, but um, we have the mom wear a mask. We do strict um, hand hygiene with the newborn. Um, the newborn, you know, drop, we, so we basically have mom wearing all sorts of like, you know, gloves and then basically making sure that the baby doesn't come into contact with either maternal secretions or, you know, with her um, hands directly. When the mother has had symptoms for more than, you know, more than 14 days ago, then um, we admit the, we, the again, the, the baby does come into the mom's room. Um, the patient still wears a mask and we, you know, we take general precautions, but they're not as, um, uh, heavily enforced, uh, let's say, um, and as as uh, if if the symptoms had just um, happened. And if the symptoms have been there for only 72 hours, or the mom was you know just recently found to be positive, those are the cases where we're separating the baby. So we take the baby to the nursery, and at the time of discharge, the baby is actually sent home with another family member that is uh, found to be COVID-19 negative. Um, quickly, in coronavirus is immunocompromised children. There really isn't a whole lot of data out there. Um, you know, both SARS and MERS, which were other coronaviruses, were not associated with, significantly associated with the immune status of the patients themselves. In the SARS-CoV-2 uh, um, um, outbreak, there is one uh, paper out there from um, an Italian tra pediatric transplant center. These, this transplant center um, has about 300 or so uh, immunocompromised patients that they take care of. Of those 300, only three had um, tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 and none of them really even required inpatient um, care. Um, there is another paper out there looking at adults and cancer. So, um, you know, 1% of all the um, cancer, uh, COVID-19 patients that they had were had cancer. Um, in this cohort, lung cancer was the most frequent type. Um, four of the, you know, only 25% of the, of the patients had received chemotherapy recently. And most of the patients actually were either cancer survivors or had some sort of primary resection without having, um, under, without having undergone uh, chemotherapy. However, patients that were in that did have cancer seemed to have um, a higher probability of severe disease. That's the green line up here. But again, the numbers are so low, it's a little hard to interpret this data as well. Um, and then lastly, we do have a solid organ transplant um, registry that is the, univer that the University of Washington is keeping right now. 
This um, registry has um, 120 cases right now. Of that, 67 were kidney transplant, 14 were liver transplant, heart, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, the median age, and this again is in mostly adults, so the median age is 56 years. Um, they have um, only 15 of this 100 and um, 20 cases are recent transplants. So the rest of the 120 are those that were transplanted, um, you know, a, a, a while ago. Uh, and so suppose, so these patients would actually have be on lower immunosuppression compared to the recent transplant. Um, none of the, these cases are thought to be donor-derived infections, although some of them uh, might be nosocomially acquired. 20% um, of these patients are suspected to have um, some concurrent infection, uh, mostly viral infections, or sorry, mostly uh, bacterial infection. One patient did have um, pneumocystis as well. Um, this data is very, very um, new. So, um, but having said that, 70% of the patients, um, of 70% of these 120 cases um, did need to be admitted into the hospital, of which about half of them required intensive care um, unit support, and 19% of them had to be intubated. Uh, we've only had six pediatric transplant patients across the, the country that were reported to this registry. The 70% of patients admitted, this is a little, again, when you look at the, you know, when you look, the, the authors or the, the, the keepers of the registry sort of make the point that this is a very new registry and right now only the patients that are actually being that are actually in the in the hospital and being followed closely are the ones that are being reported so this percent is probably artificially um, higher than what it um, actually is um, in my last slide I just wanted to have a, a mention a few um, social and ethical concerns that are specific to pediatric to, to these populations that I just talked about in pediatric populations you know like, like I said 90 percent of these kids also have family members that are sick. Um, and often these, these, you know, these are adults, so they're actually sicker than the, than the pediatric patients that we are taking care of. Um, you know, kids need their parents, kids need um, other family members um, around them to make them feel better. And um, so we, uh, but because of the limited caregivers being allowed, that's often not, um, um, possible. Um, like I said, we, of the two PICU, uh, of the four PICU kids that we have, two of them actually had um, a, a mother or, or a father that was actually admitted and intubated in, in the adult ICU across the hospital. So you can imagine these kids are very, you know, they're sick themselves, they're very worried about their parents. Um, and then you, you know, so we, we tried to put at least one of them on a on remdesivir, which is experimental therapy, um, but we, but the mom who was the caregiver of this child was intubated in the hospital. And so we couldn't find a, you know, um, a, a caregiver, primary caregiver to sign the consent form for this child. And so we had to go down the route of, you know, getting um, our legal uh, team involved, et cetera. Um, pregnant women as well, again, limited support systems allowed in the hospital right now. Moms, if they're recently found to be positive, may not be able to meet newborn, you know, their newborn. Breastfeeding, as you know, you know, setting, um, I mean, coming into contact, the skin to skin, um, you know, contact with mother between mothers and infants is so important to set up uh, the whole breastfeeding cycle, which can be disrupted by the uh, management of COVID-19. Um, and then the last one I wanted to make was about healthcare workers. So our hospital is sort of a perfect example of, you know, we, we're a freestanding children's hospital. We don't have a lot of adult patients. And so it is very easy for our healthcare workers to become complacent that, you know, because children are not getting infected, that they are not getting infected, that they are at lower risk of getting infected, but we still have to remember that our adult colleagues can also be vectors of COVID-19. And so we actually have more healthcare workers positive uh, compared to children being positive in our system. So I will stop there. Um, if anybody has any questions. So <clears throat> thank you, Mehreen. Um, this is uh, Shahid Rubik, uh, your host today. So I, let me... Um, uh, thank you for a great uh, presentation. Let me introduce our panel. I um, have a, uh, uh, you know, uh, very esteemed panelist also there from different um, parts of Pakistan as well, so that we can learn from them what is going on in their cities and in their hospitals. So uh, first I'll go to uh, Dr. Muhammad Ali, who's from Hyderabad. Then, uh, uh, Dr. Qureshi, please go ahead and give your question or comment. Introduce uh, yourself. Hello. G, introduce yourself and then question and comment. Uh, yes, Dr. Shahid. Gigi, Boli. 
I am working at Lakhat University Hospital, I'm sure, as a family physician. Ji. A very good uh, presentation from Dr. Maheen. And very comprehensive, very elaborated regarding the age, regarding the symptoms. Uh, so it's very nice to be part of your अपना जी बताइए कुछ हैदराबाद में क्या आप देख रहे हैं कि ज्यादा बढ़ रहे हैं केसेस या इतने केसेस तो नहीं है लेकिन सस्पिशंस ज्यादा है खौफ और जो है वो लापरवाही दोनों रुझानात हैं यहाँ पे एक तरफ खौफ ज्यादा है लोगों में कुछ लोगों में और कुछ लोगों में बहुत लापरवाही है लेकिन फिर भी अंडर कंट्रोल्ड है इतने केसेस नहीं है हमारे पास अच्छा मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटी so thanks for this very elaborate and fantastic presentation uh, there is one comment uh, about the because uh, gangaram where i work is uh, now dedicated as uh, um, a, a hospital for the pregnant patient who was suspected of covid 19 positive so we are getting uh, uh, patients now just today we did a c section and uh, and in hysterectomy so um, uh, as mehreen uh, uh, was sharing her experience aur unhone bataya ki hum hum kis tarah se newborns ko kar rahe hain so what we are doing we are doing a little different hamari apni humne apni as i am vice president or president of society of, of obstetrician and gynecologist of pakistan as well to humne apni guidelines banayi thi main mehreen se thoda sa puchna chahungi according to our circumstances हम बच्चे को द मोमेंट बेबी इज डिलीवर्ड व्हाट वी एडवाइज्ड कि जी आप अगर कोविड पॉजिटिव मदर है तो आप बच्चे को रूम uh, इन ना करें बिकॉज वर्टिकल ट्रांसमिशन नहीं है लेकिन हॉरिजॉन्टल ट्रांसमिशन के रेट तो बहुत हाई है स्पेशली इन आर सेटअप पेशेंट्स आर नॉट स्ट्रिक्टली कि वो मास्क पहने या मदर इज टचिंग द बेबी तो आप किसके बारे में क्या राय है and yeah i think that's that's a, that's a good question and i and you know i mean i hamara uh, bhi jo hai we i feel like every week we change our uh, our uh, recommendations uh, but i i totally agree with you i think uh, you know if mothers are not uh, i think the reason that it works probably in our setting is because mothers are much more aware and maybe educated um in terms of you know wearing masks and wearing but you know they at times they've actually asked us to take the baby away because they're so worried about you know passing it on to the baby so uh but if that is not uh, you know i can totally imagine uh that not being the case in in um uh in in pakistan and so i think uh, anything that you can do to uh prevent the baby from getting infected would be great because like i also showed you you know most of these uh um severe illnesses actually happen in less than one you know less than one uh, one year ka jo age group hai so i i think uh, i think in pakistani setting i think what you're doing actually makes sense okay thank you um let me uh, go to kaleem ahmed please introduce uh, yourself and comment and question assalam alaikum uh, kaleem ahmed uh, i'm a pulmonary critical care and sleep medicine uh main mehreen se puchna chahunga ke there was some studies uh, on a small number of patient uh from china ke breast milk mein they have not found any coronavirus is there any new data there and number two is um if they are taking a full precaution especially in pakistan setting to breast milk ko pump karke baby ko pilaya ja sakta hai ke nahi haan ji i so you're absolutely right the the initial the um, i forgot to mention that case series that i said uh, that i showed uh, earlier the 38 uh, infants ke upar jo thi um 38 pregnant mothers ke upar usme they did test breast milk as well um and placental samples none of which were positive for uh for the virus and um i and again we there is no there is no further data on that um i know that people have looked um and have not found uh found uh 
uh, breast milk but again numbers are very very small um in our um in our uh, hospital we are encouraging mothers even when they separate when we separate the babies we are encouraging them to pump and uh, give the give the breast milk to the um, to the um, uh, to the baby because also remember with the breast milk you're also you know transferring a lot of anti um, antibodies which are extremely helpful for babies from uh, for other viruses and other pathogens so I think um, to answer your question I think uh, pumping and giving the breast milk um, is absolutely fine thank you thank you um... I'll next go to Shoaib, Dr. Shoaib from Nishtar uh, Medical University. Uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself and then question and comment. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Yes, Shoaib, Sir, I'm working as consultant neurologist in Nishtar Medical University, Multan. Uh, good morning, and uh, this is a very nice talk by Dr. Mehreen. Uh, sir, may uh, I would like to ask uh, from the madam that uh, uh, we have come across some uh, some papers about the role of BCG, uh, uh, that the BCG is either protective and does, uh, what are your uh, suggestion and opinion about it? And uh, secondly, sir, uh, here in Nishtar, uh, we have uh, come across many doctors who are, uh, uh, have been positive uh, uh, with the COVID and uh, the situation is very alarming because more than 60 doctors have come across to be positive, COVID positive and the health, uh, the health workers, they are very much reluctant uh, and very much uh, in, a, in a stage of fear that the disease is, uh, this may not disseminate in, the, uh, in this uh, uh, hospital settings. Uh, just, just that was my comment and uh, the question already I asked. Yeah, Anji, that's a, uh, thank you for, for asking that. I think a BCG question, you know, uh, you know uh, is it's gotten a lot of press. So basically what, you know, the reason it got press was because this one study was published that showed that countries that had BCG, uh, that, that do BCG vac vaccination also um, seem to have lower number of cases. I think my major concern with that study is, okay, if you look at the, if you look at the, the um, countries that they have, um, you know, listed uh, in that paper. These are also the countries that are that that tend to be resource limited, right? So, I mean, Pakistan is a great example, and uh, there are lots of other countries like that. Okay, when you testing, so how do you know? Okay, you know, uh, okay, cases, your actual cases, kitne, right? So, um, so, so, ek baat to hai, okay? a lot of these, a lot of these countries um, that give BCG are also uh, low resource. Secondly, ye hai ke, you know, countries like China and, and Iran also give BCG, so yet they had thousands and thousands of cases. Um, so, you know, that again doesn't, doesn't make sense. Spain, parts of Spain, uh, Spain is another hotspot of COVID-19 right now. Um, and it also, uh, uh, you know, until very, very recently uh, was still giving BCG vaccine. Um, the other thing is, so BCG, one of the reasons that they think the BCG might have a role is because in children, they've shown K, uh, and again, this was a Spanish study um, uh, that was published a couple of years ago that children who got uh, BCG also were protected against other um, childhood viral illnesses. Okay? So less than five years old kids who got BCG had seemed to have less uh, you know, respiratory viral, viral illnesses. Now, there is no data at all that shows that BCG ka effect to hair loss into adulthood, especially into the older uh, population where most of the uh, disease from COVID uh, seems to be occurring. Children are protected from, seem to be protected from COVID anyway. So the effect of BCG, I think, um, is really negligible. And I think that um, I, I, I honestly, and I know that there are some studies that are sort of trying to look at BCG, but I don't think that that's going to pan out at all. And I think after your question, you know, the comment about healthcare workers is very, very important. And that's why I um, mentioned the fact that even in our children's you know, pediatric hospital, we've had a number of healthcare workers that are positive. And I think it's, you know, it's, um, it's very, uh, so all of these positive, by the way, were before we did universal mas masking. Since we've done universal masking, where every single person in the hospital, no matter what, what they're doing there, wears a mask, um, these numbers have really, really gone down. Um, but I think it's just very, very important for us to remember that the hospital is like an incubator for the virus. And so, you know, no matter where you step, no matter what you touch, it's, there's going to be virus there. And we just have to be very, very, very careful with PPE and with, you know, making sure that we're doing hand washing and social distancing among colleagues as well, not just with patients. 
Great, thank you. So, Dr. Shweb, I have asked you how many percent of you are the health worker who are talking to the minister who are wearing masks, face masks. Everybody or 50 percent or what do you think? Dr. Shweb? I uh, would like to introduce uh, Dr. Motan. Please uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, question and comment. Assalamu ji. This is Maria Motan. I'm a staff cardiologist in Loma Linda at the VA hospital, and I'm a professor of medicine both at UCR and at Loma Linda University. I have a question about for Pakistan. Hospitals in Pakistan, they want a, a COVID negative certificate from the patients before they can admit them for any non-COVID reason. How well it is that question and screening how are they getting the uh, no COVID negative certificate? So how is that being done? So who can answer that? Um... Uh, let me uh, see, uh, Professor Shamsa um, Humayu, if you have any, uh, you know, uh, feedback on that, or did Professor Shamsa, uh, please unmute yourself and answer that. Yes, I have done. Gigi. Can you, Gigi, my voice is coming? Gigi, it's coming, you can tell me. So, I have also studied in the questions that I have seen in my opinion. I am not sure about Lahore. Because as many things as our government sector hospital in Punjab, I can tell you that if you don't have a certificate, then you will be admitted. Because the emergency work is happening in every hospital. But the elective list, they are... We are not doing any elective surgeries. Or uh, certificate learning ka matlab ye hai ki yahan pe test jo hai bohat agar aap jaldi lenge test to in some labs you can get it in 48 hours, kuch 7 days mein de rin, kuch 5 days mein, so it varies. So it's not in my knowledge or in, uh, at least I can uh, tell about my own hospital. वहाँ तो ऐसी कोई restriction नहीं है कि आप पहले certificate लाएं तो फिर आपकी appendicectomy होगी या आपकी cholecystectomy होगी. So, or this private hospital where I practice, there is no such thing. Or mostly the patients, mostly the symptoms and history, we are relying on it. If someone has come from outside, number one, number two, someone has come from the age, someone has come from the age, or any of the patient or the relative, near relative of the age, someone has come from the age, then it's a different story. Then we ask if you can do your test. They can most of the time, it is not practiced in, it is not being practiced here in Lahore at least. It can be some private hospitals that demand for you, like Aga Khan or some other way. But in general, I don't have to listen to it. Because you're Mehreen Malik Intensivist from AKU. She's also writing, yes, we are screening everyone now at least for surgery. جی وہ دیکھیں آگا خان کے پاس ریسورسز بھی ہیں اور آگا خان کا لیمیٹڈ اس طرح سے ورک لوڈ ہے ہمارے ہسپٹلز جو سرکاری ہیں آپ کو پتا وہ تو دے ہیو ہیوج ورک لوڈ اور نمبر اف پیشنٹس کہیں زیادہ ہیں اور دی ٹیسٹ کٹس آر سو لیمیٹڈ کہ اگر آپ یہ کہنا شروع کر دیں کہ ہر بندہ پہلے سرٹیفکیٹ لے کے ہے تو جو سسپیکٹر ہیں آپ تو نہیں کہ ابھی نہیں ہم کر سکتے اٹس آج میں دیکھ رہی تھی تو ہی کہ پر بھی ہیو ڈ تو اگر آپ الیکٹر سرجیز کے اور سب سے سرٹیفکیٹ مانگنے لگ جائیں گے تو بتائیں پھر وہ پیشنٹس تو that would not be we will be doing this favor to those who really deserve that test اچھا thank you let me go to Dr. Kabani please unmute yourself and introduce from panelist Yes. Uh, uh, hi, Dr. Shahid. I was having trouble connecting today. It kept disconnecting, oh, so I have not heard most of the uh, the presentation. But uh, uh, this is Dr. Kabani from uh, uh, Houston. I'm just letting you know in case I get disconnected again. There was some problem today. Uh, yeah. 
जी बताइए कोई क्वेश्चन और कमेंट आपके जी जी मैं बता रही थी कि आई डिडंट रियली गेट टू हियर द होल थिंग आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ इफ बिकॉज़ आई हैव स्पोकन टू डॉक्टर डॉक्टर शमस हुमायूं ऑन माय ओन एंड आई वाज जस्ट वंडरिंग व्हेदर द पीपीई फॉर द हर कंसर्न अबाउट द पीपीई क्वेश्चन वाज एड्रेस्ड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रेजेंटेशन सिंस आई मिस्ड मोस्ट ऑफ इट because i think uh, she had some uh, you know we were discussing that there is a uh, yeah, dr shamsa was was that it addressed your okay. question uh, 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 that uh, g dr kabani uh, uh, thank you so much bp ka ab hamare hum yahi discuss kar rahe the ki pp is matlab kahan pe कितने लेवल तक यूज करें लेकिन अब मैंने अपने हॉस्पिटल में एज वी आर नाउ मैंने पहले भी बताया डेडिकेटेड कोविड पॉजिटिव पेशेंट्स के लिए फॉर द प्रेगनेंसी डिक्लेयर हो गया हमारा हॉस्पिटल तो जैसे अभी मैरीन ने कहा कितने ज्यादा हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स इनके दे गॉट पॉजिटिव सो मास्किंग 100% वी आर एडवाइजिंग एंड इंश्योरिंग रादर और जो हमारी अपनी ऑब्सटेटिकल टीम है Uh, so uh, what we made a policy for them every uh, girl it's a female hospital let me tell you for the uh, obstetrics and gynecology yes yeah, sure i yes so, i know it ji ji so maine maine to apni ladkiyon ko ye advise kiya hai ki every patient is covid positive until unless proved otherwise hmm. so you should be dealing every patient like you are touching a covid so pp hum unko de rahe hain aur hamari local bahut zyada manufacturing shuru ho gayi hai that is uh, great oh, to know aur hame 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 pp is freely mil rahi hai hamare yahan ke jo vendors के हमारे बहुत सारे लोगों ने खुद से बनाने शुरू कर दिए एंड नाउ रादर इन अ पॉलिसी मीटिंग वी वर डिस्कसिंग कि अब उन सारों को स्टैंडर्डाइज कर लें देख लें कि कौन सी स्टैंडर्ड पे पे आ रही हैं लाइक जीएसएम 80 से हम सोच रहे हैं ऊपर वाली को स्टैंडर्डाइज कर लें और फिर उनको दे दें टास्क कि आप प्रोवाइड करें सेकेंडली इफ यू आर फिलेंथ्रोपिस्ट जो है वो फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स को दे रहे हैं जब से निश्चर का आया और पीएसी में लोग पॉजिटिव हुए हैं डॉक्टर्स और नर्सेस तो उसके बाद ये बहुत अच्छा यहाँ पे भी आ गया कि फेस शील्ड्स भी मिल रही हैं एक्सेप्ट वी आर शॉर्ट ऑफ एन नाइनटी फाइव तो के एन नाइनटी फाइव जो है वो हम अपने डॉक्टर्स को दे रहे हैं दूसरी चीज जो हमारे यहाँ पे थोड़ा सा हम जो फेस कर रहे हैं प्रॉब्लम वो ये दैट इज द टेस्टिंग किट्स तो हमारे जितने हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स हैं जैसे मेरी लड़कियां फोर फ्रंट पे हैं लाइक दे आर डायरेक्टली डीलिंग मैंने आपको बताया कि हमने सीरियन भी किए वी डिड अ डीएनसी हिस्ट्रेक्टमी सो दे आर एक्सपोज्ड तो लेकिन हमने अभी तक ये ये बिकॉज ऑफ दिस टेस्टिंग केयर अभी ये पॉलिसी नहीं बनी कि सारे हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स जो वहाँ पे काम करेंगे दे आर गोइंग टू गेट बी टेस्टेड तो अब हम उन्हें यही कर रहे हैं कि आप एक हफ्ता काम करें दो हफ्ते क्वारंटीन में जाए इफ यू हैव सिम्टम्स यस फिर तो जाहिर है आप करेंगे अगर कोई एक पॉजिटिव हो जाता है आपकी टीम में से ड्यू टू सिम्टम्स तो फिर बाकी सारी टीम का भी टेस्ट किया जाएगा अदरवाइज नो पी पी इज इज अवेलेबल और हमारी जितनी टीम जैसे पच्चीस लोग कल मेरी इमरजेंसी थी तो हमारे पच्चीस से तीस लोग ऑन ड्यूटी थे तो सबके पास पीपीज थी एंड दिस वर सफिशिएंट इन नंबर हम उसका एक लॉग रखते हैं कि कितनी यूज हो गई और कितनी रह गई और कितनी सो दैट दैट इट शुड नॉट बी मिसयूज्ड मिसयूज्ड राइट थैंक यू सो मच लेट मी मूव ऑन टू डॉक्टर रबनवाज खान यू आर अनम्यूटेड प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस योरसेल्फ आप बीर से बोल रहे हैं तो हम जानना चाहेंगे वहां पे क्या सिचुएशन है अस्सलाम वालेकुम आई एम डॉक्टर रबनवाज फ्रॉम बीर Uh, here we are living in a periphery uh, in a rural area and most of the cases here are reported these are in the tabli uh, hazrat uh, we have in our uh, uh, hospital about uh, 23 patient admitted right now and they have mild symptom uh, cough fever mild not uh, even not require anyone uh, not require oxygen and uh, so eight of them are recorded uh, they we have discharged yesterday uh, still uh, here 
as a problem that uh, we should uh, do the maximum number of screening so that uh, the actual number is uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, because uh, here we have shortage of staff also in uh, uh, avoid uh, we have leg avoid screening program uh, so uh, here uh, the situation is not too bad but uh, not uh, not uh, very good also gd so um now i would like to um so, so uh, after the introduction of panelists and their um, round to go to attendees. Nigat Ahmed, please uh, ask your question. You're unmuted. Um, uh, can you hear me? Aslanikum, ji. Ji. Go ahead. Ji. Uh, thank you so much. I love this because uh, this is an ideal combination of uh, uh, Pakistani and US uh, physicians uh, across the board. Um, my, I still have to ask, ke why are patients who have mild symptoms uh, are admitted at home? Do you think that we have our population to blast career. We can have volunteers. Uh, for example, in Sawat, in a hospital, with mild symptoms, if people are reading, you can educate them, you can explain them in their language. And then have somebody you know, monitor them, one of the volunteers, in their, around their home or city or whatever. So our wards are with patients with mild symptoms, healthcare workers being exposed. So my question is, how do they do it in their home? Sorry, I'm going to be a clip. I was watching a clip in a WhatsApp group. Sindh Interior Sindh was something that he had made a video on the phone of all the patients they are eating drinking uh, you know water and having you know wa doing things on their phone and they're very happy and none of them looked uh, sick and they they actually said themselves that we we do not have any symptoms so whether it is because pakistan does not have serious or severe cases at this point and and because they think that at home uh, they cannot be quarantined, I, I don't know. Uh, anyone else on that panelist? Because, because abhi to peak, I don't know. We have like, kafi cheeze open up ho rahi hai, but we have pa uh, patients on ventilators in our hospital as well. So my question is, we should have the hospitals uh, for people who are really, uh, you know, sick. Uh, and not burden our healthcare, uh, you know, workers and hospitals with patients who are testing positive with mild symptoms or moderate symptoms who are not hypoxic. So, you see, I always believe that prevention and education is not so much for our public. If you educate them, you can sit them, you can sit them, you can sit them. Or then we have a Baldiyati Nizam, I think, and have where they are going, the people of the area, in charge of the population, if the cases are increasing, we will have a tremendous, huge, you know, health issues. Gigi. So, Professor Shamsa, who is this? Sorry, go ahead. Just take a minute. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Dr. Nawaz is talking about it. इधर mostly फिर patient इस तरह भी है कि बिल्कुल जिसमें symptom नहीं है लेकिन screening में quarantine से हमने वो किया है isolate किया है quarantine से और positive है we have some discussion on that with the local government that they should be managed in home and they are asymptomatic but the local government district government are not agree that they should be managed and at home because they are just, they are positive, although they are completely asymptomatic. But uh, we have to admit these asymptomatic patients if, uh, if they are positive one. I think the, the, maybe there should be a graded system. Uh, the quarantine uh, are not actually the hospital system and, and maybe expo or something. Professor Shamsa, you raised your hand. Please go ahead. 
जी डॉक्टर शायद बहुत अच्छी सजेशन डॉक्टर निगाह दे रही थी लेकिन हमने जो ये देखा कि इवन जिन लोगों को हमने सिम्टोमेटिक को हॉस्पिटल में भी क्वारंटीन किया बेसिकली क्वारंटीन भी कर रहे हैं ना मोस्टली अगर एंड व्हाट आई वेरी स्ट्रॉन्गली फील के प्रोबेबली दिस इज द रीजन कि उतना स्प्रेड नहीं है हमारे लोग बहुत कैजुअल हर चीज को लेते हैं अंटर नंडस दे आर रियली सिक एंड दे आर बाउंड टू बैड तो आपको अपने यहाँ के ग्राउंड रियलिटीज आर वेरी वेरी डिफरेंट अगर एक बंदा भी मार होगा उसको पूरे रिश्तेदार वहां मिलने आएंगे और कहेंगे इसको तो कुछ भी नहीं है सो दे वुड बी दे विल कॉन्टेक्ट तो इसलिए गवर्नमेंट ने ये पॉलिसी बनाई आफ्टर डेलिब्रेशन के इनको एटलीस्ट यानी हस्पताल में एक वार्ड में अगर आठ आठ भी बंदे डाल देंगे दे ऑल आर ऑफ द सेम डिजीज वो हंस रहे हैं खा रहे हैं पी रहे हैं सो दिस मीन्स दे आर गुड एंड दे विल बी डिस्चार्ज लेकिन जब आप इनको घर में कहेंगे कि आप करें इनको समझाना इतना मुश्किल है हमारे पास एक पढ़ी लिखी लिखा पेशेंट आया है वार्ड के अंदर and that uh, uh, girl she was uh, uh, walking in the corridors aur khinch khinch ke hamare healthcare workers ke haath pakad rahi hai kar rahi hai usko samjha rahe hain yaar tum covid positive ho so ye counseling aap kar sakte hain logon ko samjha sakte hain but it takes such a long time उतनी देर में उन्होंने पता नहीं दस लोग और को इन्फेक्ट कर देना सो प्रोबेबली गवर्नमेंट ने इस वजह से ये कहा कि जो भी पॉजिटिव आ जाए उसको आप कम जब तक एक या दो उसके टेस्ट नेगेटिव ना आ जाए हमारे पास एक अभी पड़ी हुई है पेशेंट शी वाज पॉजिटिव इनिशियली शी वाज ए सिम्टोमेटिक विद वेरी माइल्ड सिम्टम्स और यस्टरडे हर आफ्टर सेवन डेज टेस्ट उसका नेगेटिव आया ये बर्डन तो जरूर है गवर्नमेंट के ऊपर लेकिन मेरा ख्याल है स्प्रेड को रोकने के लिए प्रोबेबली दे हैव टेकन दिस एंड लाइक यू कैन यू कैन हैव दोस क्वारंटाइन्स आर नॉट लाइक अ क्यूट हॉस्पिटल सेटिंग देयर आर नॉट एज मेनी डॉक्टर्स और नर्सेस सो देयर इज नो नो शायद शायद दिस कलीम हां कलीम बताइए तो आई थिंक अभी जो बात हो रही है वो आई थिंक इट हैज अ लॉट ऑफ वैल्यू तो मसला ये है कि कल परसों भी हम लोग बात कर रहे थे कि आप there are doctors there they're asking patient suspicious about covid but they are not going to test koi pata nahi koi stigma hai iske sath aur ji ji bilkul ki policy ye hai ki agar aap positive hain to ya to aap aapke ghar ke andar aapko kisi tarah se jo hai mehfooz rakha jaye karachi ke andar i know ke unhone apna jo expo center hai uske andar they have created a huge area फॉर दिस का नोपेशन के जो कि सिम्टोमेटिक नहीं है पॉजिटिव है खाली वहां पर ज्यादा सहूलत नहीं है एज फार एज माई इन्फॉर्मेशन इज कंसर्न सेकेंड हैंड इन्फॉर्मेशन यकीन तो लेकिन दे हैव क्रिएटेड दोज काइंड ऑफ एरियाज अवे फ्राम द हॉस्पिटल फॉर बेसिकली क्वारंटाइन लेकिन हमारी पब्लिक को समझाना जुएशी लाने के बराबर है राइट ओके सो आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन Okay, what happened to? Was it answered? Doctor Farah Nawaz was asking. So, Mehri Narshid, you already answered that um, question about um, the admission criteria for pediatrics. Gee, sorry, I I, I thought I might as well right, answer. Ah, Jee, nee, so I'll just mention it. it's it's exactly the same. The question was, ke, uh, what is the admission criteria for pediatric uh, for children into the ICU? It's exactly the same as adults. Um, basically, we're we're looking at. Uh, you know, worsening respiratory uh, re- respiratory uh, sta- status, uh, worsening oxygen requirement, increasing work of breathing, um, lab values as such. We don't depend on them, but um, you know, basically just looking at the patient. And when we think that the patient requires anything more than um, just a regular, you know, um, um, oxygen um, uh, uh, th- that they can get on the floor, um, we uh, uh, you know s- um, send them over to the ICU. Okay, great. So. Um... do we have um um uh, other questions for um dr mehreen about uh, pediatrics and uh, things from our panelists uh, uh, please um, go ahead not not really a question but just a thought that has come to me because i um, have uh, been looking at some literature on non invasive ventilation as well as a high flow nasal cannula negative pressure room and what people are doing because they're trying to get away from proning and one of the things that was i think it is being tried in europe 
is uh, putting a helmet on the patient uh, and using the non-invasive ventilation. But along the same lines, th there is also a box that you can put over the patient's face. And in pertaining to patients in, in labor and delivery, you know, it's I, I can't imagine during labor that they could put up with having a mask on their face, you know. So I'm just wondering if there are, uh, has anybody seen any devices that could be used or maybe similar to the ones that we use for non-invasive ventilation uh, uh, on the in labor and delivery to minimize the, the droplet spread? Jim Mehreen um, or anybody? Else. Sanji, that's a, that's a good question. I have not. I, I, I know what you're talking about. But I have not seen. But I also wonder, you know, um, uh, I had mentioned K, uh, 90 plus percent, 92 percent of uh, women uh, in published, you know, the, the data that's published out there, 92 percent of women who were COVID positive uh, ended up having a C-section. And I wonder if it's partly because of, you know, um, the healthcare mm -hmm. workers being a little nervous about uh, yes. Patients taking taking off their masks when they're in labor or you know pushing and and stuff. So I um I I, I do wonder, but you're right. It I can't imagine it being easy for a, a mom, uh, you know, a mother just, in labor. Yeah, when out. I was looking at the at the, one of the presentations today, I was attending. I I thought this could be useful even in labor and delivery room. You know, but so uh, go ahead. So um, I, I'm reading one question from the our webinar where people post the questions. Is there a evidence that um, uh, plant can transmit uh, the COVID virus? Uh, plant, as in like podi? Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I, not that I've come across, but I'm not, I, I can't imagine why we, you wouldn't think a plant is also a fomite, you know, uh, any surface can potentially uh, transmit uh, viruses. So um, I think I would be as careful with plants as I would with, you know, any other surface. Okay. Um. Uh, well, Shahid, uh, uh, this is Kaleem. Uh, I think uh, she's absolutely right. Uh, fomite could be anything. The, the last I read, uh, the, the New England Journal uh, has an um, article about uh, different type of surfaces where the viruses was found. Uh, uh, the highest duration was with the plastic and the steel surfaces, and the lowest uh, was of the cardboard. I have not seen anything mentioned in that report uh, uh, regarding any, any plants or leaves or anything else. But again, there's a possibility whether how long that would survive there. Um, I, I cannot, I, I could not say anything. So there is another question uh, from Dr. Amir from Shifa Hospital, uh, Islamabad. And what is the general <laughs> policy here in our uh, <coughs> Uh, country USA that um, all the people who are going for surgery, do they routinely get tested for COVID? Well, all the surgeries, uh, if it is uh, not considered as a emergency or urgent surgery, uh, we are not doing it. So not outpatient surgeries are almost uh, nobody's doing it uh, except for emergency in uh, urgent surgery and in the hospital setting um, we are taking all the precaution considering that the person who is going to the surgery uh, is probably is COVID positive so, so any, yeah, I, any place um, that is going uh, sorry go ahead uh, I was just going to say okay, um, uh, uh, in my experience it really depends on the institution as well um, like our institution we have a like test developed so we have an in-house test which turns around pretty quickly um, and so we've been uh, uh, we haven't started right now as of this as of today we are still not doing any elective surgeries um, at all but again given that we're a children's hospital and we're not seeing that many um, that many cases our plan going forward is to 
basically test every single patient that comes in for any sort of surgery or intervention that requires intubation um, and uh, test them first for COVID-19 um, with the, the rapid turnaround test and then, um, uh, and then go from there. But again, at the moment, we're not, uh, we're not doing surgeries, uh, any elective surgeries either. Yeah, along, along those lines, uh, one thing that, that has occurred to me is that apart from the patients, I mean, uh, the, uh, the practice at the hospital that I'm most familiar with in Houston and uh, at Methodist is that they are, try, they are testing healthcare workers, but it's not mandatory is what I've uh, found out. What my concern is also that not only the patients coming in, once we go full schedule on the surgery, they are not doing any elective surgeries either. But once we do go in, I would be also concerned about the anesthesiologists that have now become a team that intubates COVID patients because they are the most experienced. So in my opinion, once we go full-fledged, I think not only the patients, but also all the healthcare workers and especially the anesthesiologists should be, should be tested. Okay, so um, I will go to, in panelists, I'll go first to Shoaib from Nishtar and then Shamsa and Mariam uh, in that order. So go ahead, uh, Sh uh, Dr. Shweb from Anishtha. Sir, sir, can you hear me? Gigi, go ahead. Sir, actually, uh, uh, I Madam Shamsa Hamayu se ek guideline aur unse suggestion lunga. Uh, actually, Anishtha me hume na sir se jo bada problem ye face face ho raha hai ki jo healthcare providers hain, inko PPE nahi mil raha. So being senior, I Madam se ye puchunga. इसके लिए कि इसके लिए क्या कोई व्हाट इज द के गवर्नमेंट का कोई क्या कुछ फोकल पर्सन है या कोई ऐसा जिससे हम कांटेक्ट कर सकें कि हमारे हेल्थ केयर प्रोवाइडर्स को पीपीई दिया जाए मोस्टली जो निश्चर में इस वक्त आपने आप लोगों को पता ही होगा कि 63 डॉक्टर्स और इसके अलावा 20 स्टाफ्स और जो और स्पोर्ट्स स्टाफ है जो कि पॉजिटिव आया था in spite of this, I have to say that my साथ मेरे कुलीग्स हैं या मेरे जो जूनियर्स हैं वो हमें कहते हैं कि हमें पीपीई नहीं मिल रहा कुछ कुछ यानी कह लें कि हमारे जो इस तरह के सब हमें कुछ ऐसे मुखायर हजरात हैं जो कि हमारे अरेंज कर देते हैं लेकिन कोई सिस्टम नहीं है गवर्नमेंट लेवल पे कोई हमें सिस्टम ऐसे नहीं नजर आ रहा कि जो कि हमारे जो स्टाफ जो कि ऑन ग्राउंड है उनको ये दिया जाए तो मैडम से मैं जरा एक सजेशन लूंगा या अगर वो गाइड कर दें इस बारे में मुझे कि क्या करना चाहिए हमें जी प्रोफेसर शमसा प्लीज गो अहेड जी जी डॉक्टर साहब बात यह है कि आपके जो सबसे जब रेलेवेंट जो हैं और जो मोस्ट एप्रोप्रिएट आपके उधर आप अपने एमएस साहब से बात करें एमएस साहब डीजी हेल्थ सारों को जो यहां पे सेंट्रल एडवाइजरी एससी एक्ट जिसको हम कह रहे हैं और या अगर आपको इस तरह का कोई बहुत इशू आ रहा है तो प्रोफेसर असद असलम साहब इज द चीफ कोऑर्डिनेटर और तीसरी बात जो हमने नोट की है यानी इवन इन माय हॉस्पिटल uh, COVID ward mein hamari nurses without PP bethi hui thi. To maine unhe kaha bhi tum logon ko jab humne diye hain, why you are not wearing? To aapke hamare healthcare workers mein ye bhi hai ki ek baar PP pen di, fir usko utarenge kaise? So they have apprehension. To fir humne unko kaha ki dekho yaar tumhari jaan zada zaruri hai. Tum isko pehno. Even they 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 were reluctant to wear mask. Ki ab saara din ham kaise pehne? To ek to ye ki bahut zada doctor sab aapko stress karne ki zarurat hai. Number two, जैसे हमने logbook बनाई भी judicious use of all those protective measures. इसलिए कि हमारे पास उस तरह नहीं है कि हम कहें जी बहुत ज़्यादा हम एक पूरा दिन का issue करते हैं और फिर हम अपने log में से उसको निकाल के और next time हम उसको replace कर लेते हैं. Thirdly ये कि अगर आपका hospital वाले ये कहते हैं कि जी हमें वहाँ से नहीं आ रहा यहाँ से नहीं आ रहा तो जो local vendors बना रहे हैं आप उनको कहें कि जी आप लें government ने पैसे release कर दिए हर hospital के लिए अब आपके लोकल हॉस्पिटल ने खुद परचेस करना है खुद ही डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करना है तो मेरा ख्याल ये है कि अपने रेलेवेंट हॉस्पिटल और जैसे मैंने आपको कहा है कि आपका जो डीएचओ या डीजी हेल्थ है उससे कोऑर्डिनेट करें इंशाल्लाह जरूर मिलेंगे जी ओके सो प्रोफेसर शिमसा आपका कोई और था कमेंट नाउ वी आर गोइंग इन अ हां जी बस वो मेरा 
जी ये कमेंट था कि हमने एक और चीज जो इम्प्रोवाइज की है उससे इनसे डॉक्टर कबानी से भी मेरी बात हुई थी हम अपने हर पेशेंट को अपसेटिक पेशेंट के और जो उसका केयर गिवर है उसके दरमियान में हमने एक शील्ड लोकली अपने जो मैक या प्लास्टिक का वो होता है वो हमने वो वो उसके दरमियान में हम खड़ी कर देते हैं ताकि मास्क तो पेशेंट पहनते नहीं ये खुद ही उतार देते हैं हाथों से और हमारी फीमेल्स को मास्क पहनाना स्पेशली इन लेबर इज इज अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट टास्क तो अब हमने ये करना शुरू कर दिया कि हमने दो ड्रिप सेट्स या दो इस तरह से स्टैंड बना लिए उसके दरमियान में हम एक प्लास्टिक शीट लगा देते हैं बस ये मैंने ऐड करना चले थैंक यू सो नाउ आई थिंक आई वुड लेट्स गेट अ क्लोजिंग स्टेटमेंट्स फ्रॉम आवर पैनलिस्ट डॉक्टर मरियम मोथन योर नेक्स्ट Dr. Motin, go ahead. Oh, Salikum. I was just trying to answer the question about patients going for surgery. Like in any other hospital, Amari Hospital, maybe we don't do surgery which are uh, elective, and patients that need to go for surgery, they do get the screening questionnaire and uh, make sure that the screening questionnaire is negative, and they get a face mask. They don't get any kind of swab testing unless they have lymphopenia. That's when they get tested. for um covid otherwise they don't okay great um all right uh, so we are uh, again uh, getting closing um statements from our panelist uh, kaleem you go ahead and any final thoughts nahi i think uh, this was a good discussion mera khayal hai ki pakistan ki jo realities hain wo hame zyada samne aa rahi hain और आज की डिस्कशन मेरे ख्याल से सबसे ज़्यादा हेल्पफुल इस हवाले से रही है कि वहाँ पर ना सिर्फ लोगों की एजुकेशन के हवाले से हमें जो जो है तहफात थे अब हम ये भी देख रहे हैं कि हमारे हेल्थ केयर वर्कर जो हैं वो भी जो है वो इन चीज़ों को इतनी ज़्यादा संजीदगी से नहीं ले रहे हैं मेरा ज़ाती ख्याल ये है कि मुख्तलफ इंस्टीट्यूशन के अंदर यकीन देर आर वहाँ पर खास डिफरेंट लेवल के इंस्टीट्यूशन हैं कुछ बहुत ही अप टू द स्टैंडर्ड काम करते हैं कुछ जगहों पर जो है उस कस्म की चीज़ें नहीं हैं तो मेरे ज़ाती मशवरा ये हुआ कि एक हर्डल बनाए एक रोज जो सीनियर लोग हैं वो अपने अपने वार्ड के अंदर अपने सारे स्टाफ चाहे वो हाफ रोब हो चाहे वो असिस्टेंट हो चाहे वो नर्सेज हों चाहे जूनियर स्टाफ हो उनके साथ मिलकर दो तीन दिन के बाद एक छोटा सा एक ब्रीफ पाँच मिनट का दस मिनट का उनको एक अवेयरनेस बताएं कि इसकी क्या अवेयरनेस है अगर हस्पताल का अमला खुद काम इस तरीके की प्रिकॉशन नहीं लेगा तो महंगी पीपी खरीदना और उसके बारे में बात करने के अलावा उसका कुछ फ़ायदा होगा नहीं और अब तक हस्पताल का अमला जो है वो चीज़ों को सही तरीके से इम्प्लीमेंट नहीं करेगा मरीज और मरीज के लफाकिन जो है यकीन उसको फॉलो नहीं करेंगे और जनरल जनरल पब्लिक जो है वाम नाजर है Uh, हमारे हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स आर रोल मॉडल फॉर देम बट लेकिन वो जो निश्चित um, से बात आई कि मे बी उनको थोड़ा वो प्रॉब्लम भी हो रहा है लेकिन आई डोंट नो देर मस्ट बी वेज और अब अगर पाकिस्तान में बन रहे हैं तो uh, मेरे ख्याल है कि अगर आप और, और दूसरे लोग जो हैं अपना के अगर वो नश्तर के किसी uh, जो सीनियर लोग हैं उनसे डायरेक्टली कॉन्टेक्ट करके पूछें कि भाई क्या वी कैन डू दैट वी कैन डू दैट फाइंड आउट भी प्रॉब्ली निश्चर के अलमनाई के जो है जी बिल्कुल बिल्कुल चलें ठीक है कलीम दैन मोहम्मद अली कुरैशी यानी फाइनल थाट आपकी अगर कोई कुछ कहना चाहें आखिरी हेलो जी जी मोहम्मद अली कुरैशी इंडीड वेरी बेनिफिशल टॉक टूडे आई थिंक ये चीज है कि स्टिल इवन पेशेंट्स तो अपनी तो अपनी जगह पर आम पब्लिक तो अपनी जगह पर लेकिन स्टिल वी हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स आर ऑन द रिस्क सो देर इज नीड ऑफ सीरियसनेस और दैट ये जो अभी डॉक्टर साहब ने कहा कि देर मस्ट बी ए डेली आर आफ्टर टू आर थ्री डेज आर वीकली a real sir for that to recheck and uh, uh dobara se wohi cheeze hame karni chahiye aur 
अपने पैरामेडिक स्टाफ को शिपर्स को अवेयरनेस देनी चाहिए तो इट्स वेरी नेसेसरी आई थिंक और इस तरफ तवज्जो बहुत कम है और पीपीएस की डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के हवाले से भी थोड़े डिफिकल्टीज हैं हमारे यहां यहां हैदराबाद में बहुत कुछ करने के कहने के बाद कुछ थोड़ी सी इंप्रूवमेंट हुई है लेकिन स्टिल इट शुड बी इंप्रूव्ड मोर आई थिंक ठीक है थैंक यू ओवरऑल ओवरऑल थैंक यू बाकी रमजान के हवाले से शेड्यूल आपने क्वेश्चन ईयर कहा कि अभी हां वो अभी डिसाइड हो रहा है रोज पोल ले रहे हैं हम तो फिर देखते हैं जो मेजॉरिटी कहेगी उसी के बारे में हम आजाहिर है कि रोज तो मुश्किल होगा तो अभी तक मेजॉरिटी तो ये कह रही है कि सैटरडे संडे करें लेकिन टाइम डिसाइड करना है अभी हमें कि वो सैटरडे संडे भी जो है वो किस वक्त किया जाए हां ये बिल्कुल टाइम डिफरेंस की वजह से थोड़ा सा इसको चेक करना पड़ेगा फिर सैरी अफतारी के टाइमिंग से ना एग्जैक्टली चलें वो देखते हैं थैंक यू डॉक्टर कुरैशी um next i will uh, go to i think um we're done one question came late from azhar al husain that anybody wants to talk about uh, the drug remdesivir and uh, whether it is um, you know the experience uh, uh, anyone uh, kaleem or any other panelist or uh, our speaker um i i i can talk about remdesivir so remdesivir is a um um they actually uh, developed for ebola um and it's supposed to be a inhibitor of the rna polymerase you know the enzyme that uh, is involved in replicating the virus um so it's got the data is sort of uh, there was a recent paper that was published looking at the uh, results from compassionate use um of the uh, of remdesivir so it may there was um you know again compassionate use ka matlab hota there's no comparison group so wherever they report there's no like group to compare it to so we still don't know however in this paper they did show ke one there uh, and again it was used in patients who were uh, very sick and more, more most of them were intubated and so among patients who were intubated um, only 13% of them uh, ended up actually dying whereas um, from most of the studies uh, we've seen that mortality in patients um who are intubated is around 50%. So if you just look at that then maybe remdesivir is helpful um but we can't really say because you know you know randomized control trials which actually give you data are still ongoing um and um i will say in my personal personal experience uh, we have tried this on um you know a uh in our adult hospital between our adult hospitals and us we have tried this on a number of patients with good results but it's you know it, it's still hard to say okay, whether they were going to get better on their own or it was a it was a drug but yeah ke okay, at least at this at, the, at for now we do know okay, that remdesivir does not have a lot of side effects um you know it's a it's pretty well tolerated so i think that is um a uh, good news going forward um but uh, studies are ongoing to see whether or not um how effective it is okay great yeah chai yeah, i think i totally agree uh, uh, this is kaleem um the problem ye hai ke um the abhi jo hai yahan us ke andar jo hai there are uh, randomized control trials ho rahe hain new york ke andar jo hai mount sinai ke andar i know there is uh, other places uh, other part of the world uh, there are multiple issues number one ke at what stage it should be given uh, number two the data jo china's ka data tha it was a very kind of mixed data there those patient were on everything they throw the kitchen sink kis kisi patient ko jo hai wo 10th day pe mila tha kisi patient ko 20th day pe mile the majority patient with the latest stage when after the cytokine storm although there was it's a benefit seen lekin uske bare mein koi hatmi faisla karna is waqt mumkin nahi lekin there are everybody who is using it right now in the trial form or otherwise uh, they are very optimistic so that's the best we can say okay great all right uh, we have come to the end of uh, this um, wonderful session uh, we are very thankful to mehri narshad for a great presentation um bringing a different angle uh, to all this discussions that we are having um uh, and uh, thank you for attendees panelists uh please keep coming uh, we we'll, uh, uh, we are doing this 